but I wanted to ask you a question, Rob, sure. because I think we're on the same page here. But I, I wanted to kind of take a different angle here. What do you think about the police essentially providing the protesters their own arena with their tactics kind of blocking everybody off? Don't you think that was kind of strange? Well, and, and there's a couple things going on over there in that park. One, they're providing an area for different groups to get together. And the second, like, a disagreement appears, they run in with bikes and start pushing. And they make that area smaller. And then they, yeah, and then, yeah, and then they make the area smaller. They cut off different areas. So, yeah, I think it, if you're going to put people that are diametrically opposed to each other in one room, something's going to happen. Fireworks are going to happen. And I think they do that to say, look, look, we should have these people together. Yeah, that's one of the guys. Yeah, that's the, the commies. Yeah, it's one of the commies. It's commie sheriff. You know, that he bought with uh, his whole union. You know, so proud of that. So he was theorizing that he thinks it's a tactic, maybe that the police want an excuse to start arresting people to maybe get some of these people off the street. I would say that, but I don't know if it, like those guys didn't get arrested. I haven't seen know? anyone arrested. Yeah, nobody got arrested. Yeah, they, no. And and that is one thing I will say this with all the different agencies that are here. I haven't had any issues, and I've gone on to these roadblocks, and I've, I've like, hey, what are you doing? Let me through here. I need to get through here. I gotta get, I got my, and you know, they've been very cool. They've been like, hey, dude, shut the fuck up. Yeah, yeah. Push you over. Yeah. Yeah. Police, I, I mean, the police have been fine with me. I've had no problem with their activity. I did find that strange, but. So you were debating with some some commies. We yeah. had some people question the legitimacy of George Soros being involved in Black Lives Matter. George Soros being involved. Obviously, it's official that he's involved in the Hillary campaign. Sure, yeah, yeah. There, we're, I'm, I'm getting responses from people saying that George Soros is involved. It's no big Soros deal. It's no big deal. It's no big deal. Beyond that, right. they're saying it's yeah. a conspiracy theory and that oh, it doesn't exist. Right. No, it definitely exists because we've seen the checks. But why why is that important? Because when you have a, a small group like that given a lot of money, it means that people don't have to, A, work for a living anymore, like DeRay, which he is, has which, his own house. Which, in my opinion, and a lot of black people are realizing it, that was the agenda from the establishment to keep them down, was these entitlement programs. Right, and so now DeRay is, is living the entitlement dream. He's got a cushy school board job, uh, he has a free house, and he gets three-hour meetings with the president. And who in this country gets that? And is he pushing the type of message that's bringing people together? And I don't believe he is. I don't believe he's pushing that message. And I believe he wants to divide people instead of bringing people together. And that because I tell you what, well, I tell you what, yesterday at the, at the rally, black people, white people, everybody was coming up to me, shaking my hand, glad we were there. Yeah. It was amazing. Like, and, and the one that, this guy, I think his name was Philip. I mean, he was like, you are up, dude? And he shook my hand, and it's just like, and he was a black guy, but it's just, it's, we're, we're bringing people together because we're trying to empower people with freedom of speech, Second Amendment freedom, freedom to, to be your own boss and like make your own ideas happen, like what you're doing. You yeah, and, and that's and that's what we all want, and that's what everybody wants. And it's sad that the racial and divide tactics of the media and the Obama administration have put these people in such a hole that they can't see where we're coming from would actually lift them up with us. That's what we want to do. And there, and and this whole thing that's going on now with all the social media stuff and people posting all the hate instead of you know the love and coming together. It's and, and the people that say they're they're like these girls here that say racism sucks and this and that. If you disagree with anything that they say, they're gonna scream at you and call you a bigot or you know. So it's like you're not allowed to have an opinion that's different from whatever their prescribed mind control opinion is, which is coming from you know MSNBC and, and uh, Gawker, who uh, you know uh, Huffington Post, Salon, all those places that would, are hating the fact that a man who is more self-made than any other politician in the history of, of, of the world that's gone up, that's funding most of his own campaign by himself, it, it could possibly be president. I think he will be president. It's I think a, that scares the shit out of him. It's like what Melania said, it's not even close. And I'm actually thinking now uh, that Donald Trump is so far ahead that it's, 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 it's really not even close. It's, it's almost over. Well, but people can't get confident. But, but, but go, going back to the Hegelian dialectic, so what they're doing okay. is, is they're, so Black Lives Matter has come out and said, oh hey, we're not being treated right, we're being killed by police, which they are, and they have some legitimate beefs on some of that, but also more which white people. Which we also cover, sure. Yeah. Oh yeah, so. more white people are killed by police than black people, and that's a fact. And and then they've done studies, <laughs> it is, and she might not believe me over there, but that's fine. That's an absolute no, fact, man. But it is it is a fact, and she might not be listening to us, who knows. But, yeah. you know, and and, uh, and there's done, they've done studies where cops are more reluctant to pull the trigger. But I want to say this to black people out there, what you guys have to do is come together and have, I, I see nothing wrong with black unity and black people getting together and empowering themselves and having their own communities if they want and having their own businesses, but you, 
commerce is what made, is the great. Uh, uh, the commerce is, brings everybody together because there's bars in Austin that are totally run by commies. But everybody goes there and the exchange of money. People want a beer, they give money, they get a beer. You're not getting kicked out because you got money that they want. That makes everything on a playing field. Even if you don't necessarily agree with those people's Mutual ideas, benefit. you can still live together and still work together. Okay, we don't play together. That there's a lot to life other than working and, and, and making all this stuff happen that goes on in the world. Well, and there's a lot of issues that I might have with the police tactics or the militarization of police, oh, or the yeah. drug war, and everything. But my thing is, I'm out here trying to get closer to the police, get in a relationship with the police. One of uh, the stories that I like to use is, as a kid, I remember I would get pulled over in my neighborhood with cops I grew up with, with cops I knew. And you know what they would say? They'd slap me on the wrist and say, they'd say, get the hell home and quit acting like a fool. When I get pulled over by cops in a county where I don't know them, they treat me a lot worse <laughs> and they arrest me. So that's the illustration I use to say, look, if you want to have a better relationship with cops, if you don't want a cop to look at you and, and, and just think that you're a target for arrest, get to know him, get closer to the police. And the police are even here protecting these people, but they still want to divide against police. And the biggest irony to me is that their answer for police, their answer for the system, is giving the system more power. Yeah, and at the end of the day, they want they wanted the government to run the police, which, what government program out there has ever worked? And they don't well, work. Well, why does Yeah, well, yeah. Oh, wait, the drawer on drugs. Yeah, okay. exactly. These government programs don't work. So when you take local control away from the police, you're going to have the same, you're going to have small town cops being run the same as large city cops, and you're going to have major problems with that, and that is the wrong way to go. We need less government, uh, less big government, federal government, and more, you know, if you're going to have government, have it more localized. Okay, so, so we're about to conclude day two, at least, of yeah. daytime here on the streets for the RNC. What's your just overall synopsis of everything you've witnessed and experienced so far at this convention? It's a lot calmer, honestly, it's a lot calmer than I thought it was going to be. I thought it was going to be a lot more, um, a lot more agitation going on. I mean, what we've seen is small pockets of stuff, like over that happened in this park today. But which is kind of fulfilled the Hegelian dialectic. We need more police around here to supervise people, which I don't know if they really did. I think they were, they might have gone overkill on some of these uh, security barriers yesterday. It took us two hours to drive into our uh, HQ area because there were protesters in the streets. I'm like, that's fine. I said, I have a bullhorn. I'm not worried. <laughs> you know, that's my that's that's protester. Yeah, repellent. this is actually perfect for. Me. I, get a, I get a line of an all-you-can-eat buffet of commies <laughs> <laughs> and munch them all down. Exactly. All right. and, and, and you are, what you're doing is, is an amazing service to humanity by being able to be in the moment, see these situations happen, and then and then provide them with their own avenue of free speech. You're letting that girl talk through the megaphone, let her get her ideas up, and then let her prove her. Oh, well, then prove her totally wrong. No, she thought she had. She thought she knew what she was doing and knew what she was talking about, and you slam. Well, and the time. amazing thing too is she actually made a point that I agree with. There is a there is a mass mental uh, problem in America. She said that. Yeah. But the problem is she doesn't realize that she's the one that is the mental defective mind. She's the one that's buying into the mental defense. She says, oh, we have all these drugs in the country because of the, the, all the mental problems. Well, the truth is we have big pharma running this country that has more power than us, the citizen. Right. And that's right. why, I don't know what the numbers are, 60% of uh, people in America are on a, some sort of prescription drug. Sure. I, I, are yeah. you, are you five on no, 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 no. I, I thought I was good? getting a text. I'm good to go. So all right, well, you want to you want to sit here and cover some news with me? Yeah, what I'm do you got? going to cover some news. Sure. Well, we're going to start off with, um, okay, so... The whole Roger Ailes thing has been very strange. First, we had Veta Grand Sudstrom, whatever her name is, come out and say he's uh, basically a pervert. And then we had other women with Fox kind of backtrack that. Now Megyn Kelly is coming out and saying that Robert Ailes sexually harassed her. Do you, wow. think, do you think maybe there's something to Roger Ailes? Or do you think maybe Megyn Kelly is trying to take a step out the door of Fox? Well, that will obviously get you out the door of, of a company like that. Maybe there is some going, uh, apparently from what we've heard is that Roger Ailes' kids are trying to take over Fox and change it fundamentally. And good with, way? No, not with oh, okay. <laughs> so we need to be Fundamental change is all usually done in a bad way, um, as what we saw with Obama's America, where we're at now. He promised hope and change, though. He did, and he, he delivered on change. He I, sure did. Well, and, he, he and, delivered on hope. People still have hope. And they, yeah, they do. They're they, not going to cash in on it. But our economy's worse, unemployment's worse, real unemployment. I don't know how many people came up and, you know, were, hey man, what can I do? I'll do anything for a job. Give me a job. Give me a job. You know, people are desperate. And it's, it's, people are desperate and they're looking for something. And they're gravitating towards, you know, a social justice movement, say Black Lives Matter or 
or uh, what are the other big movements that are out there at this time? These black box communists are attracting people who are really poor and they're saying, look, you do all the work. Um, you know, now you need to get some of this. But the, you know, a, a minimum wage job is not where you start. That's not where you strive to be the rest of your life. You go in there and get those skills and then you move up. Like I had a job at McDonald's, but I didn't stay there. I worked there for about three months, and when they gave me a penny raise, I said, "F you, I'm out the door." <laughs> you know, because wait, I, you didn't protest for a higher minimum wage? No, I didn't. I oh said, "Oh my you know gosh, what? don't you know that helps?" I went and worked on a farm and got another. It was 25 more cents an hour, and then I went and worked in houses and I got 10 dollars an hour. And I said, "Wow!" When you work your ass off and you're doing something that's semi. Um, uh, you know, not everybody knows how to build houses. Not everybody knows how to hammer a nail. It's a skill. It's a skill. Not a service. When you got a little bit of skill, it's like, wow! Now you get paid more. So you start look. Oh, I'm going to learn how to edit video. I'm going to. I want to make movies. Never made movies, but what it, that ended up into making videos. I got hired. Uh, I started off at customer service at a semiconductor company. And their video guy walked out the door. He had the greatest job ever. I went in the next day and said, "I know how to shoot that video," which I kind of did. <laughs> but I knew, I knew, I'd, I'd already got the equipment. I'd already started stuff. But I probably wasn't at the level to get hired for that job. But sometimes but they take needed that somebody. Step in life. Exactly, they needed somebody to do it. And I showed them with one video of their sake breaking ceremony. I shot all the video, put it together. Like, this is great. You're hired. And that's how you. you it's a, uh, you know, luck is the intersection of, of good of preparation and timing, okay? So luck is not really luck. It's having your shit together. That's all luck is. And then, you know, the Hillary for America, Hillary's America billboard walks by and you're right there. Yeah, exactly. Which I hear is really good. I haven't seen it, but uh, a couple of our crew went and covered it the other day. It is nice because it kind of appears to be like kind of neutral. You know, and most people probably don't know who Dinesh D'Souza is. Oh, yeah, yeah. So they see it and they might, oh, okay, I'll check that out. But I'm sure and it's completely like the secrets of the Democratic yeah. Party. They must be great. So, and you know, and you pointed out about the jobs numbers that Obama loves to point to. And let's oh, also. Yeah. We've bring created out, millions of jobs. Well, you started at the bottom. <laughs> and I also <laughs> love, I always good. love to bring this up. Obama said that the measuring stick of his presidential administration would be the economy. The economy right. has failed. They try to push these fake numbers where they say they've created all these jobs, but what they don't take into account, I personally, if, if you had to do it, uh, if you accounted the jobs right now, I would personally be on there seven times. There's technically seven different jobs I have. Hopefully I have one in the near future, if you know what I'm saying. But, but the point is, so I'm on there seven times. So to the numbers that they quote, right. I'm seven different workers. Exactly. But the yeah, actual yeah. numbers for most people who have multiple jobs skew that. So when they when they lean on those numbers, it's completely fraudulent. Right. You've got three jobs. We got three new jobs. So we created, but it's three not three jobs. new people right. having three new they jobs. They also don't count once exactly. you, right. you know, or once done you leave the workforce, are you done? Yeah, and sure, then sure. you're yeah you're you're not getting unemployment anymore, and you're deciding, hey, I'm not going to look for work. Well, then you see those jobs numbers go down, and and or the, the unemployment. unemployment numbers go down, and then you see the jobs numbers rise. It was like true unemployment. Like the Ron Paul was saying in 2012, true unemployment's like low 20 percent. Yeah, yeah, I'd say it's 25 percent. I think it's a quarter of the population. If, if you yeah. talk to who want to work, if yeah. you talk to most people. I think that most people will say that they're experiencing the economy trending down. Yeah. I think that everybody has experienced that in some way, shape, or form in their life, whether it be themselves or friends or family. Everybody has experienced that. Moving out of houses, selling houses, having to move, you know, all this stuff is going on. And or everybody moving can in with their to that. parents. That's obviously being in tremendous up. debt, going to college. Uh, Consumer Reports uh, cover came out and it, and it was all about college. That was the worst decision I ever made, going to college. Because for some people, it is. Not everybody is college material, and one, most of the degrees you get in college aren't even going to get you a real job. Right. It's fake BS trying to mind control you into being a victim. These little girls here, right they here, don't, they don't like I me. bought water from them earlier. They don't like us. They don't like it? Well, no, they, they were think, mad that I was protesting for the police. Well, well I mean, they're young. They'll I, come around. I like the Hopefully. fact that they're out. Hey, we're going to get some water. We're going to go out and sell them. You know, that's a job creation. Right there, there you go. But at least Wait, they're do not, they have their permits? They're not sitting I, at home. I need to see a permit. Exactly. But they yeah, weren't and selling and lemonade, so it's okay. To take them down. Uh, but right. actually, I actually bought water off them because, hey, you know, and it was just two of them at the time. They're like, hey, you want to buy some water off of us? I said, what are y'all doing? Well, you know, we just moved here from, and we don't, you know, we're looking for, we're trying to make money for this and that. All right, fine. You can't wait. That's a good story. I'll, I'll buy some water off of them. You didn't feel guilty not giving the government their cut, though? No, not at all. In fact, that's why I liked it because I knew tax dollars. Well, of course, they had paid the taxes on it first, but you're only get seeing the taxes happen at one time. All right, so. let's let's talk about the fact that for the first time in 40 years, 
the Republican National Convention has been Bush free. This yeah. seems to be something that's well, being ignored by the mainstream news. And before you comment, I'd just like yeah. to throw this out there. Sure. To me, what we experienced last night at the convention, I believe Donald Trump has told his major endorsers, take the gloves off, go out there, say what you want to say, no holds barred. And I think that the energy that was in the convention last night kind of shows that, you know what, the establishment, that, that death, that death just existence of the Bushes and, yeah. and all these people was just gone. It kind of felt like it was free for Giuliani and Sheriff Clark and, and just to go up there and Chachi. speak their mind. Yeah, Chachi was there. Uh, yeah, there, it was a great cast of, of people. And it's people you normally don't see. Because it's not an establishment person, the establishment people went, oh, we don't want to be involved. You know, like even Kasich, the governor of Ohio, who you would think no well, would want to come no and show. like showcase, hey, look at my city, look what we did. Yeah, and Cleveland's not a bad city. Yeah, when I lived in Pittsburgh, um, we always thought of Cleveland as kind of a shithole. It's not a bad city. I no, mean, there's some parts that need work, but overall, I like what they've done with the downtown. It looks pretty good. I'd have to agree with that. But where's Kasich? Where's the governor of Ohio? He's not. He doesn't even want to be here because he's an establishment guy. He's not an out. He pretends to be an outsider. Yeah, he he's not claimed an outsider. he was. Yeah, he's he's claimed he was. He it's, it's like it's like Ted Cruz coming to be an outsider. He, you know, and once you peel back some layers, you see he's not. All of these Republicans that wanted to hold Donald Trump's feet to the fire, make him raise his arm, make him take, you know, whatever pledge it was. I disavow. I where disavow. are they now? Dis yeah. Where are they? They don't. They, they don't like it because it's not their man. Because they know the winds of change are blowing, and it's not going to be the same old, same old. So I, I think it's great. I think it's great that it's pissing both sides off. The fact that it's pissing both sides off tells me it's 95% right. Yep.